Okay, here it is, the ultimate cam test. The one you've been waiting for. Sloppy Stage 2 versus the world. In this video, we're gonna compare the Sloppy Stage 2, you know, the infamous Sloppy Stage 2 against a number of other Stage 2 turbo cams. And I use the air quotes there because a number of the cams are actually not turbo cams. Take the factory LM7 cam, definitely not designed for the factory to be a turbo cam. And yet, we run boost on it all the time. Same thing with the LS9. That's right, I slipped an LS9 in it. Now, not only is the LS9 not a turbo cam, it's not an NA cam. It's a blower cam. And yet, we ran it NA and with a turbo. Does that mean all cams are turbo cams? But more importantly, let's find out how the Sloppy Stage 2 does versus the factory cam and how it does against the other turbo cams. To do that, we're going to run it first, here in part one, naturally on the ground. And the reason I do that, yes, I know there are turbo cams and you can't run them NA, but you can. So I'm going to run them all NA, find out what power curve they produce, how much gain there is over the factory cam. Then, in part two, we'll follow that up with boost. What we're looking to find out is not just how well the Sloppy Stage 2 does, I assume it's going to do well even on this 4.8, and how it compares to the other. But more importantly, look at how all of these cams do, NA and under boost. Take a look and see if the curve looks the same. If we get the NA curve, provide a consistent amount of boost, guess what the curve should look like? It should be a mirror of the NA curve. That's why I always tell you, every cam is a turbo cam. So let's get to our test and find out how they do. To run our Sloppy Stage 2 versus the world, I needed a test mode. So I selected a 4.8 liter LR4. Now this LR4 had one change to it. Way back when, this is probably eight or 10 years ago, we had a problem with one of the pistons. So we replaced the factory pistons with a set of forged pistons from JE. They got a slight dome on them, so it brought the compression up just a little. Otherwise, this is a stock LR4. Stock 706 heads, Stock Gen 4 rods, stock block, stock crank. We even have the truck intake, factory throttle body. We do have a set of long tube headers, and we've dialed everything in on all of the cams with the Holly HP management system. Unfortunately, on this test, I wanted to get idle vacuum on all of them, but I didn't manage to get that. I did get cranking compression on all of them, and obviously, we have the power curves on all of them. So check it out and start out with a factory cam, then we'll step up to the stage twos. This is the stock cam run.
Sloppy Stage 2. To get things started, we put our 4.8 liter obviously up on the dyno and ran it first with a stock cam. This is actually a cam we pulled from a 5.3 liter LM7, but it's a cam that it shares with that LR4. So we'll compare all of them to this baseline with our test motor, and then we'll also compare them to the sloppy stage two if you guys want to know what all what it does against all those cams. So this is our stock motor. Well, I say stock. It's a 4.8 liter stock head, stock crank, block, rods. It does have the forged JE pistons with the small dome in them, so it's a little bit higher compression. It has a factory truck intake and throttle body and stuff. Obviously, everything's tuned with the Holly HP. So let's take a look at our first cam, and, and let's go with the smallest one, because this, this cam was actually already in this motor, so I just ran it. I uh, wasn't planning on using this in the test, but it's the little torque cam from Brian Tui Racing. So you can see it offered good power gains basically everywhere compared to the factory cam, which is nice and, and kind of rare, especially down low, because it's hard to get big gains there. But uh, we'll take a look and see how this cam, which is in red and the stock cam is in blue, how this cam compared to the Sloppy Stage 2. So now the Sloppy Stage 2 is in red. It's the one that made the most power out here. It made 415.6 horsepower. And for torque, it was 364 foot-pounds. As you can see down here, down at the 3,000 RPM range, that Sloppy Stage 2 is down quite a bit compared to both the factory cam and the torque cam from that little torque cam from Brian Tui Racing. Not surprisingly, uh, because it's, you know, both of those cams are very mild, but um, big power on the top from the Sloppy Stage 2. I'm going to now get rid of that torque cam. So you can just kind of compare the Sloppy Stage 2 to the factory 5.3 liter or 4.8 liter cam. You can see they were, uh, it crossed over where the Sloppy Stage 2 started making more power at about 3,500. Not by a lot in here, up to 4,500, but then really started to take off. It's kind of a big cam with 228 degrees of intake duration compared to the factory LM7 cam, which is 190 or 191. Big power all the way out and would continue, you know, out past 7,000. Uh, and as we'll see, maybe with the boost stuff, if we have boost behind that, it will carry that curve even farther out. But this is what it did on our 5.3 liter. 364 foot-pounds and 400 and basically 16 horsepower. Now let's take a look at another camshaft. Next cam was actually from Clay Smith and what I'm going to do with each one of these cams is I'm going to put up the cam card so it'll tell you not only lift and duration and lobe separation angle but the actual valve events. The only one I don't have valve events for <laughs> is the sloppy stage 2 but we'll put the specs up on one of these so you at least know the lift and duration and lobe separation are on that uh, sloppy stage 2. So this is the factory LM7 cam, and this is the Clay Smith cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you can take a look and see what it is. And a lot like the sloppy cam, it, um, you know, made good power. Peak power is out at 413. And peak torque, 367 foot-pounds. Lost a little bit down low in the, you know, 3,000, 3,100 RPM range. And as a comparison, let's take a look and see how this thing compares to the Sloppy Stage 2. Sloppy Stage 2 is in green. So they basically made the same curve from 5,500 out to 7,000. The Clay Smith cam was probably a little bit milder and made a little bit more power below that point um, all the way down to 3,000. So it was up by... Let's see, 87, 95, you know, seven or eight foot-pounds. Not a ton, but a little bit, and it might be, you know, might help with the drive drivability and stuff. All right, let's take a look at our next cam. The next cam run on our 4.8 liter was from Comp Cams. Once again, this is our factory LM7 cam for our 
4.8 liter. Here's what happened when we installed the comp cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up there. And once again, very similar to the other cams, uh, a little bit different. Um, equipped with a comp cam, actually made 420.8, so almost 421 horsepower, so good peak number out there. Peak torque was 365 foot-pounds of torque. You can see in the middle here from 36 or 3700 to 4500, basically made identical power to the factory LM7 cam and lost out mm, from 3700 on down. Now if we compare this to the Sloppy Stage 2 cam, we can kind of get an idea what's happening with that comp cam. The comp cam, comp cam had more losses down low compared to the Sloppy Stage 2, but did make more power on top. So basically, that comp cam traded power from the bottom up to the top. Did a nice job, very comparable. Depends on where you want your power. Let's take a look at the next cam. This next cam I actually threw in at the last minute. It's the factory LS9 cam. And the reason I did it was because I also wanted to compare advancing, retarding the camshaft on this 4.8 liter. I was looking for additional low speed power by advancing the cam, so we wanted to find out if that was possible. Unfortunately, we didn't get a big gain, but there's a video up on that already. Let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the LS9 cam compared to the factory LM7 cam. Not bad power, good peak power up here at the top, you know, 403 horsepower, peak torque was 355 foot-pounds, but as you can see from about 4,900 all the way down, it lost a ton, and down here at 3,200 RPM, 271, 313, so like 42 foot-pounds of torque, it lost a ton down there. That's pretty typical, we see that with the LS9 cam, good peak power, but loses a bunch through the middle and down low. Here's how it compared to the Sloppy Stage 2. Basically, the Sloppy Stage 2 shown here in green is better than the LS9 everywhere. It's a lot better down low, offers a lot more torque. You know, below 3,000, they might get close, but everywhere else it's better. And it's better up at the top, too. So the LS9, not an ideal cam for a 4.8 liter. We'll have to see how it does under boost. Let's get to our next cam. Next up on the 4.8 liter was a the tick cam <laughs> that sounds kind of funny this is our factory elm 7 we'll put the specs up here as always here's what happened when we installed the cam from tick performance tick cam did very well 416 horsepower well even a little better than the factory cam from 3400 on out Lost a little bit down below there, 33,000, like most of them. And here's how the tick camp compared to that sloppy stage two. Again, very, very comparable. Um, the tick cam, more low speed power down low in the 3,000 to basically 35 or 3,600 RPM. Had a touch more through uh, a lot of the curve. They kind of traded up at the top. Um, you know, you wouldn't notice anything a difference between these two cams except down low where it might be more drivable and stuff but they're basically making the same power on this 4.8 liter take a look at our next cam next up on the 4.8 liter was a cam from jfr go ahead and put the specs up here yeah, similar to some of the other stuff maybe a tad smaller let's see here that can produce 411 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 367 foot-pounds of torque. And it was better than the factory LM7 cam, you know, all the way from 3200, 3300. Let's see how this one compares to the Sloppy Stage 2. So it being a milder cam, you can tell by the duration, the intake duration. Sloppy Stage 2 made more power out at the top from about 57 or 5800 on out. Not by a ton, but by a little bit. But below that point, that cam from GFR made more power, and especially down low. So again, it comes down to kind of where you want your power. Let's take a look at our next cam. 
The next cam I installed in the 4.8 liter came from Summit Racing. And actually, they supplied two. This one was an 8706, kind of the bigger of the two. And it produced 415 horsepower, 367 foot pounds of torque, and like the others, better than the factory cam, starting at about 3,400 RPM. And lost power down low, down in the 3,000 range, like most of them have. Compared to the Sloppy Stage 2, Summit Cam made a little bit more power in the mid range uh, and down low, but out of the peak, about the same. But here is an interesting comparison. We'll get rid of that Sloppy Stage 2. Here is the smaller cam from Summit. This is the 8720. So you can see that the 8720 made as much peak power as the 8706, 4157, yeah, 415, 416. That number is kind of pretty consistent for a lot of these. But it made the smaller cam actually made more peak torque, 370 foot pounds, and made basically more torque from 5,700 RPM all the way down. I mean, down at the bottom here, it was a 94 and 304, so a good 10 foot pounds down there. So it makes a difference. The thing I want to point out is this milder cam basically is a better combination for the smaller 4.8 liter. Unless you're revving out to 7,500 or 8,000, the smaller cam would be a better combination because it makes um, better power, better average power through most of the curve. It would help the turbo spool up and it would allow you to make, since it makes this power, you can basically make everything that that turbo, you know, if you had like, let's say a thousand horsepower turbo, this smaller stage one style cam would give you everything that that turbo has to offer. It, it would just offer it with better drivability and low speed power and stuff than these bigger cams. So that's an interesting comparison. Let's get to our next cam. The next cam up was from Brian Tooley Racing, stage two turbo cam. Take a look and see. As with the others, I'll go ahead and put the specs up and show you what this cam was all about. But we have a similar thing to a lot of the other cams. We have a loss in low speed power down here at 3000 RPM. Picked up power through most of the rest of the curve from 3700 RPM on out. Hook with the Brian Tui Stage 2 cam and made 414 horsepower. A lot like the others, a lot of the others, and 365 foot-pounds of torque. So this is a very popular cam. It performed kind of like we expected. Let's take a look at the next cam. The next cam we tested was from Brian Tooley Racing. This is our LM7 cam. Here's the Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 Turbo Cam. And like a lot of the others, it lost a little bit of power down here at 3,000 RPM compared to that factory LM7. Picked up power everywhere else from about 3,500 RPM. Brian Tui Racing Stage 2 made 414 horsepower and 365 foot-pounds of torque. And if we take a look and compare this to the... Sloppy Stage 2 cam, that Elgin cam. You can see very similar power numbers. A little bit better here for the Sloppy Stage 2, one or two horsepower. I, I don't know that you, <laughs> you would be able to feel that or, or measure that out on the street. Um, similar power curves, you know, all the way through on this 4.8 liter. Let's take a look at our Nest Cam. Our final Stage 2 Turbo Cam-ish. Came from the guys over Cam Motion. Steve does a good job over there. They do a lot of cool stuff. So this is our stock cam. This is our Cam Motion cam. Hey, look! <laughs> if I close my eyes, I'm gonna guess that it makes less power down around 3,000 RPM, which it does. And the crossover on this one for cam motion is a 3400 RPM where it started making more power than the factory LM7. 
equipped with the cam motion it made 416 horsepower and torque checked in at 367 foot pounds of torque so should be a familiar trend here Let's take a look and see how it compares to the sloppy stage 2 cam motion cam a little bit better on the bottom down there with 3000 you know this is all one or two horsepower basically and honestly i i don't think you'd ever be able to feel that or measure that it, essentially these cams are kind of all the same on this 4.8 liter but cam motion cam did good I like steve and those guys over there let's get to our conclusion okay guys what'd you think about our comparison of all these cams on our 4.8 liter i mean the sloppy stage 2 did very well and that's kind of to be expected it's actually a fairly good sized cam for a 4.8 which brings me to my next point other than the factory lm7 cam the ls9 cam and the smallest summit stage one cam all these cams produced very similar power numbers despite the fact that they had wildly different valve events so why do you think that is here's my opinion i think it's because of our test mode. I think these cams are good sized cams for a 4.8. In fact, and I tell this a lot, that sloppy stage 2 with 228 degrees of intake duration, I think it's too big for a 4.8, especially for any kind of streetcar. Now, sure, if you're running it to 7,500 RPM or 8,000 RPM, it works well, especially under boost. You can make a ton of power if you want to run at that engine speed. In my opinion, if you got a streetcar, even a turbo 4.8 liter, I pick a smaller stage one type cam. And the reason for that is a stage one cam will allow you to get everything out of say a thousand horsepower turbo, like a 7875 or an S475. You can still get everything that that turbo has to offer. But with a stage one cam, you do it with better idle, better drivability, and more low speed power. So on a 4.8, I'd go smaller, but that's not what this test is about. What do you guys think? What's gonna happen now after we add boost. Will the cams still be the same? I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and tune in when we hit part two under boost.